Hey guys, how you doing? Today we're going to carry on from a previous video where I uh, upgraded it to Server 2012 R2 and obviously moved the FISMA rolls and the skimmer as well. Uh, in this video we're going to upgrade the second domain controller. It is a Server 2003 server on 32-bit Windows and we're just going to wipe this operating system and basically just uh, install Server 2012 R2 and use it as a second domain controller on this network. So the first thing we want to do is we want to basically just shut this machine down and just check that the primary domain controller, so the Server 2012 domain controller holding the skimmer and the FISMA rolls is working correctly with DNS, DHCP. So we'll shut this one down and we'll check that the clients can still pick up an IP address, still get access to the internet, home drives, etc, etc. And then we'll go from there and reinstall this server. Let's do this. So this is the 2003 server. We're going to go ahead and just shut this one down. It is the second domain controller that hasn't been upgraded obviously yet to uh, 2012 R2 to match the other domain master. We'll plan that. Shut this machine down now. Is this server here? DCO2. It's shutting down. You see the raid array there? Flushing away. There we have it. So that one is now off. We're going to go to the server 2012 domain controller now and just check that we can obviously get internet access and IP addresses, etc. DNS, DA, check that DNS and DHCP is working correctly. Let's go and do that now. So uh, back on the KVM here, we're going to select, uh, as you see, DCO2 is off in the list there, server 2012, which is our server from the previous video. You can see our DNS records there and uh, DHCP in the scope. Let's go ahead and go to Impero, one of our other servers, and let's just check that the machines check in okay when we boot them up, and uh, obviously instant access as well. Obviously they won't get an IP address if something isn't working properly, so let's go ahead and do that now. So operate power on PCs. Just gonna click the auto button on this to make the screen fit properly. Okay, it's sent out the command to boot them up. In a minute they'll check in. So this is a suite of computers that I've asked to turn on. There's 28 computers in that room uh, and you would have seen those rooms being imaged in previous videos as well. So the IV suite images. Uh, here they come, coming up online now as you can see. Okay we'll get them to log on now so operate log on. Um, we'll log them in with a test account just to check that they can obviously log on. They wouldn't be checking in if DHCP wasn't working correctly and DNS as well. So, so far so good. Server 2012 is doing its job on its own solo without a secondary domain controller. So it's obviously working correctly. The machines are now logging in. There we go. They're all logging in. Okay, and now we'll get them to go to a website just to check the internet is working okay. So www. We'll go to bbc.co.uk. Helps if I spell BBC right. That would help. There we go. Launch. I'll close this down. There we have it. BBC is loaded up on all of the machines. Just check, see what this one here is doing. Ah, there we go. It's just recovered from an update. That's all. There we are, BBC on it, fantastic. So that's all of them okay. Just going to quickly check that their home area is mapped. It is indeed. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I would say that the domain controller is doing its job on its own solo, which means we can safely proceed and obviously reinstall DCO2, which is on 2003 32-bit Windows Server. We'll just do a fresh install on that server now. So let's go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and close this down because we're no longer need Impero. Fantastic. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and move to the DCO2 server, which is obviously offline. Uh, if we come down to the machine itself, we'll put the data stick in and get it booted up. So I've got a data stick here with the 2012R2 on it. We're going to go ahead and connect that into the server. There we have it, it's in the server, let's boot it up. Server boots up. Let's go back to the server now. See what it's seen. 
and we need to tell it to boot from the data stick. Okay, so we're in the BIOS now. And if we come on through to the boot controller order, we just need to change the USB drive key to the top. So we're going to put that to number one. So we'll use a USB drive first and anything else second. Check that's applied, it has. Let's go ahead and exit the utility, F10 to confirm and exit. <laughs> so the server reboots, obviously, after you do any changes in the BIOS. And it should now boot from the data stick uh, as soon as it gets to, obviously, clearing the, the RAID array. Okay, so it's getting past that now. And it should just allow us to USB boot straight away. Attempting to boot from USB key. And there we have it. I'm going to pause this and wait till it's done now. Yeah, but I never said I was any good at IT in the first place. I don't know what your problem is. Alright then, so let's go ahead and change the language to United Kingdom. Go ahead and go through the installation stage. Okay, so there's the partition for Windows to sit on. Uh, we don't want to touch the other drive, so we just literally want to put it onto the, uh, the C drive effectively. So we're going to format that. And we're going to click next on it. There we go. And now it's just a waiting game, guys. Just have to wait until it's installed Windows. So the machine is now rebooting. I've also removed the data stick from it with the 2012 on it. So obviously it can boot up rather than from the memory stick. A mistake that sometimes you make by mis you know, accident. So now the machine's rebooted again, and it should take us to the um, default administrator password. It wants us to set one, the local administrator password. Okay, so I've entered the password I want, we we'll finalise the settings, and take it to the desktop, and then we can start configuring. Okay, so first log on. Waiting for server manager to start up. Okay, so we'll leave it there for a minute. We'll minimise that down. First thing I want to do is I want to remove the local security account policy for password complexity. So I'm going to run and I'm going to go to secpol.msc, bring up the local security policy. From here, I'll bring this down so you can see a bit better. From here, I'm going to go to Account Policies and Password Policy. Click on that. In the list here, we'll have Passwords Must Meet Complexity Requirements. We're just going to disable that. That won't be effect now. That won't sort of, that won't take effect now until I uh, reboot. So, OK. Click OK on that. Done. Secondly, I want to set a static IP on this machine. So we're going to come up to the adapter settings here. Ethernet. Properties. Bring it down so you can see again. Uh, I'm going to set a static IP on this adapter. So, remember we couldn't do a, a direct roll-up on this operating system because it's 32-bit. So we couldn't obviously roll that up to a 64-bit OS. You have to do a fresh install or wipe and load. Okay, as for DNS, we're going to select the primary domain controller as the primary d preferred DNS and obviously use its own as, as an alternate. So, 10.12.140.212. So that is the uh, server 2012.0 server above here so the one in the rack we want it to use this one the Dell okay let's come back to this and put in its own as the secondary okay so that's going to be a static IP for this server click OK on that okay this also means we don't have to republish it in DNS because DNS will already have a record of this okay so let's go ahead and Go to server manager and local server. From here, we, we need to rename the computer because at the moment it's, it's been generated an automatic sort of uh, uh, name. So we want to name this first. So I'm going to change the name of it. I'm going to call it DC02, as before. OK. Click OK. 
click close, it'll ask for a reboot, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, secondly, we want to enable remote desktop on this thing. So we want to allow remote connections from remote computers and any authentication level is fine, done. Thirdly, we need to turn off the firewall. So, firewall. Don't want, there it is, Windows firewall. We want to turn the Windows firewall off because you're behind a, a router anyway. Well, in fact, two routers and two firewalls. So, click OK on that. It's not recommended, but in domain level environments, you, you normally turn it off anyway. Okay, so there we go. That's all we can do for now. We need to reboot this machine. Once we've rebooted, we can then basically uh, promote this to a domain controller. So let's go ahead and do this. So restart. So it's booting up again now. So second one there, second one down. Okay, let's log back in again to the local administrator account. And obviously now we can change the password to be in line with the others. So there are 12 physical servers and two virtual servers on this current network as it stands. And um, obviously you need to kind of keep some conformity there so that they're all the same. Otherwise you get really confused. So let's go ahead and change the password and make it in line with the rest of them. If you don't want to. Okay, password's been changed. So now that is the same as the rest of the uh, servers on the network here. First thing we do now really is activate Windows, okay? We then need to join this server to the domain. It will just be a member server for now. And obviously we can run it, run DC promotion. Then we can run DC promo and obviously promote it to a domain controller. That'll install DNS and DHCP. And obviously join it to the existing forest. So let's do this. So local server. Let's minimize this down and we'll bring up Slui. Slui number three. So enter a product key. I'm going to enter the product key. Okay, peeps, as you can see, uh, it says thanks, you're all done. It's activated Windows OK. Uh, if we just refresh the desktop, the uh, sort of watermark goes away. So, next thing we want to do is we want to join this server to the domain. Okay, so we need to go ahead and go back to server manager, local server. It's no longer going to be part of a work group. I'm going to go ahead and click change and join it to our domain. So, member of domain, and I'll just type in our domain name. I'll then authenticate with our domain. There's going to be people crying out to me, why didn't you DC promo it first? You didn't run the DC promo removal tool on it? I did, I just didn't show you guys because I just thought, well, it's easy to get on with it. So I forgot to actually mention I did that, but it's not a big deal, you just do it the same way as I'm about to do in a minute. So let's go ahead and uh, reboot now. Now the server's a member server and we can reboot. Now we can log on with domain credentials. I never liked IT anyway. Right, we're back up and running. We're on the domain. There's the acceptable use policy, setting group policy. Log ourselves back in. So KW school, administrator, domain administrator. And we'll log in. Waiting for the profile service to start. Logging you in for the first time ever. Ooh. Let's do this. Uh, I'm mental, as you can see. Uh, yeah, a cup of tea with a random St. Andrew's Church of Scotland print on it. Okay then, laddies. Hurry up, server manager. Get on with it, will you? I don't even like IT. Right, we're going to click on the local server here at the top left. Okay, so we're going to go up to manage at the top. We're going to go to add roles and features. We're going to click next. We're going to click next again. Next for this server. And then here we're going to click on Active Directory Domain Services. Okay, it tells you what it's going to do. It's going to add a load of different roles as well. So all the administration tools and obviously DNS tools. Directory services as well. Add features, next, next, next. Um, the directory store stores information about users, computers, other devices on the network, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things to know, you'll need to have a DNS server on the network. Well, we already do. We have the other server 2012 domain controller, that's just the primary role holder and the schema holder. That already has DNS and DHCP running, so we're all good there. So let's go ahead and click next, and then we want to click install. 
The server will need to reboot anyway. So it says, installation has started on DCO2. So it's installing the tools at the moment, and after that it'll ask us to promote it to a domain controller, and that's where we configure it and tell it to uh, be a part of an existing forest, rather than a new forest or a new domain. Come down to the server itself, see the uh, drives there flashing away, frantically. Alright, so now that it's finished doing that, we're going to obviously click promote this to a domain controller. And this is where we basically configure the domain controller. So we want to add the domain controller to an existing domain, okay? We're going to connect it with our domain administrator credentials. And click next on that. It's going to check it's okay. Now we're going to type in the directory services restore mode password. Okay. It's going to be a global catalog server and DNS server. Delegation cannot be created because your third parent can't be found. Show more. Yeah, that's fine because it's already DNS running anyway. Replicate from any domain controller. It's obviously seen the uh, server 2012 installation. The current domain controller here. So we can just obviously cl click on that. We're just going to replicate from that. We're going to leave the sysfold and NTDS folder alone. And that's it. So click next it's now going to obviously promote itself to a domain controller so there's obviously two on this network rather than just the one so at the moment it's just this one up here doing all the work like a trooper in a minute there'll be two it says here that uh, all the prerequisites checked and passed successfully click install to begin it's just moaning about static IP because we've already set that and IPv6 isn't set. Well, it doesn't really matter because we're not bothering with IPv6. Okay, install. Waiting for DNS installation to finish. Checking group policy management console to be installed. Of course, it needs that. It's domain controller. It's going to have group policy on it. Replicating the schema directory. Nice one. Here we go, guys. It's looking good so far. I have complete confidence in myself. I can do this. Easy. There we go. Brilliant. Replicating data, DC. It's replicating DCO2 with server 2012. It's getting all the information from Active Directory and DNS. There we go. Woohoo. So the server will now reboot. It says that it's just grayed it out here, but it says that the server is successfully configured as a domain controller. Click close on that. The server's now going to reboot anyway. Uh, obviously it needs to reboot to continue. Jake likes this. No, no, well, that won't work. I can't put Linux on these servers. We don't run a Linux network. No, 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 Red Hat won't work. No, no, we can't use that. No, what do you mean you want to use Mint? You can't use Mint on these. No, I'm not using Chromebooks. What's wrong with you? Let's log back in. So far, so good, guys. So, it's all good. Nothing to worry about. Perhaps if I type the uh, username in right. It's going to now log us in. See what DNS is doing. It will take a little while to replicate properly anyway. Let the services start. Let's give it a few minutes. So when you promote a server to a domain controller, it actually installs Active Directory and DNS standard. Um, that's why I didn't obviously select DNS in the roles and features wizard because it adds it anyway. So let's go ahead and have a look at AD and see what it's doing. Active Directory, users and computers. Give it a few seconds to load up. If I just maximize this, check the uh, Replication is going through correctly. It's going to bring this across, we can see. A little bit closer for you. Okay, so under stations, we should have our OUs, which we do. They have replicated fine from server 2012. You can see those in there. In users, we should have all of our staff and students and users, which we do. They're all in there. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and just check DNS as well. So, DNS, 
as you can see, DNS is populating from server 2012 as well. There we have it. All the machines are obviously forward and reverse locking up. I'm going to go back to the Impero server now and just check that machines can still log in and get internet access, etc. Here we go, so operate and then we get them to log on as a test account again. Log on. There we are, they're all coming online. Again, I'm going to get them to go to a website to check the internet is working for them, DNS is working. So let's go to www.play.com, how about that? Launch. They should all load up Internet Explorer and go straight to play.com. There we have it. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think that's working okay. And just recreate the shares on the other drives. So this PC, here we go. All we need to do is go into the WDS drive. We don't actually use, we actually use the deployment server for that. So that's obviously where it used to be years ago. Uh, a data folder, we need to share resources for the staff to use. So sharing, advanced sharing. So share this folder, resources, permissions. Just give everyone full control, simply because they're not going to be able to get to it without administrator credentials anyway, and it's mapped to their areas, so it's not really, it's only for staff to use. Okay, done, and board works for staff as well. Sharing, advanced sharing, share this folder, board works, permissions, everyone full control again. If you've got a problem with, if you've got a problem with the permissions on setting, just say it, it's not going to make any difference to me. Okay, menus, share start menus here for the students and staff, sharing, advanced sharing, and obviously this only needs read only on it, so read only, everyone, okay, okay, done. Okay guys, so in theory, that is just done. This server has been reinstalled from server 2003, 32-bit, and basically wipe and loaded up to 2012 R2. It replicates from server 2012, so there are two server 2012 R2 servers on this network now, that obviously do share all of the logons, DNS DHCP requests. I could, in theory, add DHCP to this as well to authorize it as a server that manages that as well, but at, at this stage, you don't really need to. And in theory, that's it. So we've gone through a process this summer of migrating from 2003 in 32-bit up to server 2012 R2, 64-bit. Uh, for me, it's been a fantastic experience. I've made some mistakes. For obvious reasons but at the same time it's working fantastically the students are going to have a better experience it's future proofing this school and obviously secures the school as well um, we've got a new server arrived it's a, a vrtx from dell which is down here we need to install that at some point into this rack here and we've got a couple of sort of blades to go in them but for now i think that's it so Thanks for watching guys as always, and please like and subscribe to me, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to share the videos as well. I'm Jake Billing. see you later, bye. What do you mean you want to go back to XP? Service Pack 3? No! Alright, Vista.